Hello again. Uh, welcome to Kick Dragon Vids. Today we're going to talk about uh, how Satan shall imitate the coming of Christ, but in what point? Well, the, we've been talking, documenting to you in all the videos that Satan shall come. You know, the, the Antichrist is Satan, you know, praise God. And if you don't believe me, we'll go back to the first video and, and go on to the next one. And I've been trying to document to you on all these videos that Satan's going to imitate the coming of Christ. And today, you know, the last videos were on Satan shall come from heaven. Well, did you know that Satan's going to come in the clouds like Jesus? And not only that, Satan's going to come as a thief because Jesus comes as a thief. But only, but again, Jesus only comes to a thief on, on those that are asleep, to those that are not watching. Well, Satan's going to come suddenly also in an imminent and in the clouds. You know, it says right here in Matthew 24 that Jesus... In verse 30, he's going to come in the clouds. It says right here in Matthew 24, verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and those shall all the and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Here in Matthew 26, verse uh, 64, it says the same thing. It says, Though has said, Nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. And as you know, Revelation 1-7 also says that, Behold, he cometh in the clouds, and every eye shall see him, even them that pierced him. Right? So, let's do I'm going to document to you that Satan's also going to imitate that part, that he's going to come in the clouds. So, let's turn there to Jeremiah chapter 4. Praise God. Jeremiah chapter 4, and we'll start verse 5. It says, Declare ye in Judah, and publish in Jerusalem, and say, Blow ye the trumpet in the land. Cry God... Cry, gather together and say, assemble yourselves and let us go into the defense cities. You know, there's seven trumps in the Bible that we need to worry about. And uh, of course, the sixth trump is when Satan comes and the seventh trump is when Jesus comes. Jesus comes in the final trump. The Bible says there in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 52, at, at, the, at the last trump. Praise God. That means the, the last trump. The last one, the very last. In other words, there's not one coming after that one. Praise God. Verse six says, "Set up the standard towards Zion. Retire." That means, uh, praise God. Stay not, for I will bring evil. The Hebrew word ra, which means uh, evil or bad. I will bring evil from the north. And every time when you see that evil from the north, it refers to the locust army. Evil from the north and the great destruction. Praise God. And of course. Destruction is, an, is another name of Satan. Verse 7 says, The lion is come up from the thicket. Who's the lion here? Well, Satan, you know, Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Revelation chapter 5, verse 5. Well, Satan also comes as the lion. Remember 1 Peter 5, 8? As a roaring lion seeking whom to devour. Right? Satan, Satan's an imitator. Well, the lion has come up from his thicket. And the destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way. A lot of people say this is Nebuchadnezzar. But it says the destroyer of the Gentiles. It doesn't say the destroyer of Jerusalem. It says the destroyer of the Gentiles. Who the destroyer? Well, that's, well, how do you say destroyer in Greek? Well, Apollyon. That's another name of Satan. He's the destroyer. He's the plunderer, the spoiler, the corrupter. And uh, you look up that word in your Strong's and it's 7843. Praise God. And it means, uh, you know, the to destroy, corrupt, a spoil. And we know who the destroyer is. The destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way. He's coming. Satan shall come. He has gone forth from his place, you know, from the axes that... That limited access that we spoke of in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and also in Revelation chapter 12. To make thy land desolate. Who's the abomination of desolation? Who makes the land desolate? Satan. And thy city shall be laid waste without an inhabitants. For this gird you with sackcloth, lament and howl. For the fierce anger of the Lord is not turned back from us. And that reminds me, man, this is, we're real close. I'm going to go there to six, to uh, Jeremiah 622 real quick. I just leave your, I just, we'll, we won't miss the spot. We'll leave our finger there. And Jeremiah 622 says, Thus said the Lord, 
Behold, the people coming from the north country. Remember the north country, the locust army? And the great nation shall be raised from the sides of the earth. Yes, it starts out with the armies of the earth. But remember, there's four stages of the locust. And we're about to see pretty near the final stage where it modifies itself to, a diff to something way different than here on the earth. In other words, these locust army is the ones that are going to come from heaven. Right now, yes, we see it. We see a swarm of the Arbe. Praise God. But that is going to be more, uh, metamorphosized into something way different, meaning the fallen angels. Verse 23 says, They shall lay hold on bow and spear. They are cruel and have no mercy. Their voice roareth like the sea, and they ride upon horses set in array as men of for war against the old daughter of Zion. We have heard the fame thereof. Our hands wax feeble, weak, and anguish has taken hold of us, and pain as a woman in travail. You see, when we see the pain of a woman in travail, we're talking about the, the we're talking about the end, to end days. Why? Because the the child is coming, the son is coming. But always remember that that before true labor comes false labor, before the true Christ comes the false Christ. We're talking about end days here. Verse twenty-five says, "Go not forth into the field, nor walk by the way, for the sword of the enemy." Who's the enemy? That's another name of Satan. You know, the sword of Christ, the sword of the Lord is what? The word of God. So what is the sword of Satan? His lies, his deception, and fear is on every side. That word pakad, which means terror. Do we see terror on every side now? Praise God. Verse 26. O daughter of my people, gird thee with sackcloth and wallow thyself in ashes. Why, why are people going to mourn? Make thee mourn. Make thee mourning as for an only son, most bitter lamentation. Praise God. Pay attention to the next part. For the spoiler, the same word, 783 in your strongs, the destroyer shall come upon us suddenly. Let me repeat that again. It says, for the destroyer, the spoiler, shall suddenly come upon us as a thief. It's imitating the coming of Christ. Why are they going to mourn as the only begotten son? Because they're going to, they, they, many will lose the son. Many will lose Jesus Christ, the truth. And they're going to figure out that they were worshiping the false one. And that's why they, they will mourn and even ask the rocks to fall upon them. For they will, shall be so ashamed. Praise God. Let's go back to Jeremiah 4. And I'm going to start again with verse 7. It says, The lion has come up from that thicket. The destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way. He's gone forth from his place to make thy land desolate. Thy city shall be laid waste without an inhabitant. Verse 8. For this gird you with sackcloth, lament, and howl. For the fierce anger of the Lord is not turned back from us. Verse 9. And it shall come to pass at that day, says the Lord, that the heart of the king shall perish, and, and the heart of the princes. And the priests shall be astonished. And the prophet shall wonder. Why? Why are they going to wonder? Well, Amos chapter 5 verse 18 tells us. Praise God. You see, woe unto those that desire the day of the Lord. For that day, of, for that day unto you is not, is not light but darkness. Why? Because they're expecting Jesus to be the, they're expecting that first Jesus to be Jesus. No, it's not going to be Jesus. It's going to be darkness. It's going to be Satan. That's why the Bible says in the book of Micah 1 12. Praise God. It says, and they expect the good. Praise God. But evil descended down. Evil, the evil one, Satan descended down. Praise God. Yeah, they were waiting for they were waiting for Jesus, but they weren't taught. You know, that's why these prophets are gonna wonder. They weren't taught that Satan was Satan actually comes first. The Antichrist comes first. Verse 10 says, Then said I, Ah Lord God, surely thou hast greatly deceived these people in Jerusalem, saying, You shall have peace, whereas the sword reaches unto the soul. God. You see, the Lord doesn't deceive anybody, but because they did not love the truth, God shall send them a spirit of strong delusion to believe a lie. Praise God. They are, when Satan shows up, they are going to believe he's Satan. Praise God. When Satan shows up as Jesus, they're going to believe he's Satan. Why? Because they did not receive the love of the truth, and God shall send them strong delusion to believe a lie. Verse 11. And at that time shall it be said to this people in Jerusalem, a dry wind. 
of the high places in the wilderness toward the daughter of my people, not to fan, not to cleanse. Is that a good, you know, it's not air conditioning fan, you know, it's not something good. Even a full wind. And remember, what do winds represent? In Ephesians 4.14, the doctrines of men. Praise God. Even a full wind from those places shall come unto me. Now also will I give sentence against them. Verse 13. Behold, he. And who is this he? Well, in Hebrew, and there's no, there's no contradiction. It goes back to the subject. Who are, who's the he we're talking about? The destroyer, the spoiler, Satan. And notice in the King James, it does a good job. It puts little he, meaning that it's not talking about God. It's talking about the destroyer. And verse 7, the Satan. Behold, he, meaning Satan, shall come up as clouds. Whoa. He's going to come up as clouds. He's also going to have clouds. Praise God. Wake up. He's going to come in the clouds. Clouds represent a, a, a big gathering. Praise God. And as his chariot shall be as a whirlwind, his horses are swifter than eagles. One to us, for we are spoiled. Horses swifter than eagles? How fast does a horse, a horse travel? How, how fast can a horse run? Well, the quarter horses, they can reach up to, you know, in short distances, they can reach up to 50 miles an hour, you know, lower, low 50s, you know. But, uh, but uh, an eagle, it can travel from 20 to 60 miles an hour. And when it dives, you know, when it dives to get, get prey, it reaches speeds up to 100 miles an hour. So what kind of horses are we talking about? Have you ever heard a horse running 100 miles an hour? Praise God. Or even 60? No. We're not talking about natural horses. We're talking about supernatural horses. Praise God. Let's go to turn to our, but let me prove it to you. Let's, let's go to Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 8. Habakkuk, the book of Habakkuk chapter 1 and verse 8. Well, let's start in verse 5. It says, Behold, ye among the heathen, in regard and wonder marvelously, for I will work a work in this day which you will not believe, though it be told you. You're not going to believe it. Praise God. How many people believe that Satan's going to come as the Antichrist? Praise God. A lot of people are expecting, you know, somebody else. How many people are preaching that Satan's going to come as the Antichrist? Verse 6 says, For lo, I, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation. You know, that Chaldeans was a fore, foreshadow of the true, praise God, uh, uh, kings of Babylon, the true king of confusion, Satan. This, they were just a type of the true locust army that's coming. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation, which shall march through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. They are terrible and dreadful. Their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves. Verse 8. Their horses are, are also are swifter than leopards. Over here, where's the swift? Over here it said that the, they were swifter than eagles, and over here it says that they're swifter than then leopards, well, how fast is a leopard? Well, leopard can reach up to about, in a, a, from the higher 50s, praise God, close to 60 miles per hour. And short distances also. But the thing is that it's not normal for a horse, praise God, to be faster than a leopard or an eagle. Praise God. In other words, we're not talking about normal horses or natural horses. We're talking about some other kind of horse, supernatural. Supernatural men, actually and are more fierce than the evening wolves, and their horsemen shall spread themselves, and their horsemen shall come from afar off, from far. They, the horsemen, shall fly as the eagle that hastes to eat. And this word fly is the Strong's number 5774, the word oof, <laughs> praise God, which means uh, to fly, literally, to fly or also it means to cover with wings of obscurity, of darkness. Praise God. Remember those uh, uh, cartoons or TV shows where there's a rabbit, you know, and, and then all of a sudden there's a shadow of some weeds coming. There's darkness coming. And it's because of the shadow of those wings of the darkness that's coming. That, that predator that's coming to eat its prey. Well, the same day Satan's going to come and he's going to bring darkness. Why? Because he's coming. He's going to take them. Praise God. 
It says there, they shall fly as the eagle that hastes to eat. Is the word of God exaggerating here? Well, the word of God, no. If the word of God was exaggerating, it would be lying. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be? The word of God does not lie. Verse 9 says, they shall come up, they shall come all for violence. Their faces shall be shall sup up as the east wind. They shall gather the captivity the captivity as the sand. Oh yeah, they're gonna they're gonna take a lot captive. Praise God. A lot of them are gonna be taken. I'll be the one, I wanna be the one left. No, praise God. I mean I don't wanna be the one left. I wanna be the one taken. Yeah, you're gonna be taken. Praise God by the Antichrist and his lies and his deception. Verse 10 says, They shall scoff at the kings and the princes shall be a scorn unto them. They shall deride every stronghold, for they shall heap, heap dust and take it. Then shall his mind, it says right here, his mind, meaning the Antichrist's mind, change. And he shall pass over and offend, imputing this his power unto his God. Meaning that he's going to cross the line. You know, it was said to him, touch not my anointing and do my prophets no harm. And this is where he crosses the line and actually kills the two witnesses. Praise God. But Psalms 105 verse 15 says, touch my anointing and do my prophets no harm. Verse 12 says, Although not from everlasting, O Lord my God, mine holy one, we shall not die, O, we shall not die, O Lord. Though has ordained them for judgment. Who has God ordained for judgment? Who has God already sentenced to death? Who are these horsemen that are already ordained for judgment? Who are this locust army that is already ordained for judgment? Well, the fallen angels. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 4. Uh, the ones that left their habitation and came to seduce women, they're locked up. They're already sentenced for judgment. And uh, Jude 1 6 also. And who else? Who is the one that's named actually in the Bible? The only one named. It says right there in John chapter 16, verse 11. The prince of this world is judged already. Who is that? Satan. He's the one that is ordained for judgment. So who are these locust army that are coming? The fallen angels, Satan and his locust army. Those are the ones ordained for judgment. Nobody else is sentenced to death already. Praise God. Only them. So it tells you exactly right there who this locust army is. Those that are ordained for judgment. And my almighty God, though has established them for correction. Praise God. And sure, they're going to be corrected. Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Joel. And let's see more about these clouds and how Satan's going to come as a thief. In Joel chapter 2. Praise God. Let's see if I can find Joel here. Praise God. I forgot to put one of, those, one of my markers in Joel. But here it is. Joel chapter 2 says, verse 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. And sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Remember the, the trumpets? There's seven of them. You know, even a kid can count from one to seven. Praise God. They know that the sixth trump, Satan appears. Satan actually arrives. And in the seventh trump, that's the final one. That's when Jesus arrives. Read Revelation 11, uh, Matt, uh, Revelation chapter 10, verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52, about the seventh trump. And you'll see. Praise God. It says, Blow ye the trumpet of Zion, and sound an alarm in mine holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh, nigh at hand. It's coming, praise God. But remember who comes first? Satan. Look at the next verse. A day of darkness. Are we talking about the day of the Lord? Is the day of the Lord going to be darkness? Praise God. No. Praise God. We're talking about Satan. The, a day of darkness. A day of gloominess. A day of clouds. What kind of clouds? Well, saints' clouds. Remember Revelation chapter 9? Praise God, verse... Uh, let me turn there right quick. Let me just read two verses from there. I, I covered it in the last lecture. Praise God. Uh, Revelation 9, verse 1 says, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star. That means a, an angel. Fall from heaven, a fallen angel, unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Why? Because this is the king of the bottomless pit, Satan. Praise God. And, and he opened the bonus pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit. And the smoke of the great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. You see, when you see smoke from far, far off, 
Perfect. And then it goes up to the sky. You can e easily confuse it with clouds. You know, the from far off, you can you can tell, praise God, that you once it's up in the air, praise God. And uh, do you know the difference between Satan from between Jesus clouds and Satan's clouds or Satan's smoke, praise God? Can you distinguish the difference between his clouds and God's clouds? And, or have you ever heard that Satan's going to come imitating the coming of Christ? And thick darkness and morning spread upon the, I mean, uh, Joel 2, verse 2, a day of darkness, a gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick, thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and, and the strong. There has not been ever like, see, the, in other words, we have never seen this kind of people. Praise God. We've seen all kinds of people on this earth. We've seen all the races. Because God created the, the all the races. Praise God. And he said it was good. Praise God. Right? On the sixth day. So this people, it says, you've never seen these people. In other words, these are not the, we've never seen this kind of people. These are other kind. In other words, these are fallen angels. It says, the great people and the strong, there had not been ever the like neither shall be any more after it. Like Jesus said about the tribulation in Matthew chapter 24, verse 21, and there shall be great affliction. So such as there was not ever, and so shall it not be after. And praise God, and we're not talking about monsters or locusts, praise God, or actually animals, because even Jesus said here in Exodus chapter 10, or God said here in Exodus chapter 10, verse 14, it says, And the locusts went up over the land of Egypt and rested, in the, and all the locusts of Egypt, very grievous were they. Before them there were no such locusts as they, neither after them shall be such. So he's saying there that he's not going to send another plague of locusts. It's going to be something different. Praise God. It's going to be these fallen angels. A different kind of people that you've never seen before. Where's the Bible lying? Verse 3 says, A fire devoured before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is the Garden of Eden before them. And remember, who's the one that destroyed the Garden of Eden? Who was in the Garden of Eden? Praise God. The Bible says there in Ezekiel 31 verse 8 that, he, that Satan was the most beautiful tree in the garden of God so so beautiful that all the trees envied him because of his beauty and Ezekiel 28 13 says that he was in the garden in other words he's the old serpent that seduced that holy seduced Eve and behind them a desolate wilderness why because they're the ones that bring the desolation yeah and nothing shall escape them they shall accomplish and perform Verse 4 says, The appearance of them as the appearance of horses, and as the horsemen, so shall they run. Verse 5, Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap, like the noise of flame of fire that devour the stubble, as the strong people sit in battle array. Praise God. There. Remember Revelation 9? Praise God. Yet yeah, they're dressed for battle. Are you? Verse 6, Before their face the people shall be much pain. All faces shall gather blackness. They're going to gather blackness, deception. Praise God. That's their job. Verse 7. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march every one on his ways. And they shall not break their ranks. In other words, they ha will have captains. Like you Nahum know, chapter 3, I think verse 17 says. And, and they shall be in order. Praise God. We're not talking about <laughs> some normal locusts here. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path. And when they, look at this, pay attention to this. It says, and when they fall upon, so, upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. Praise God. You know, you stab any man with a sword. If you strike any man with a sword, I guarantee you, if they're men, they're going to fall or they're going to be wounded. But these are not normal men because you stab or, or touch them with a, a, a sword. Praise God. In other words, they can't be hurt by these swords, natural swords. Praise God. It takes the spiritual sword to hurt them. Praise God. The word wounded means stop. You can't stop them with these, with these swords. 
But with the sword of the, the sword of the Lord, which is the word of God, oh yeah, praise God. Verse 9. In other words, what I'm trying to say is that they're not men, because a normal man will be wounded with sword. Praise God. Not unless they're Superman, praise God. Or not unless they're one of the fallen angels. It's telling you right there who the locust army is. Verse 9. They shall run to and fro in the and verse 9 says, They shall run to and fro in the city. Remember who runs to and fro on the earth? Job 1, 6 and 7. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. See, Jesus comes as a thief, but only to those. See, a lot of people, uh, you know, they've been taught wrong, you know, and religious, religious or traditions of men have taught people, oh, Jesus Christ can come today. He can come tomorrow. He can come tonight. That's a lie. Praise God. Bless him. Jesus Christ only comes as a thief in the night to those that are asleep. To those that are not expecting a little Jesus to show up. Why? Because they're going to be thinking that Jesus is already here. When Satan is going to be here imitating the coming of Christ. That's sure they're not going to think that another Satan is going to show up. Praise God. So when Jesus shows up, actually, when he actually comes, they're going to be all surprised. Hey, uh, who, who's this and who's this? And they're going to finally realize that they've been hacked, that they've been lied to. Satan, it says, right, enter in the windows like a thief. Satan's going to come suddenly as a thief. Satan shall imitate the coming of Christ. Everything. Praise God. Right now we're documenting he's going to come as a cloud, in clouds, and as a thief. Praise God. But remember, Revelation 3.3 3 says, if you do not watch, I will come to you as a thief. If you do not watch. Meaning, if you watch, Jesus is not going to catch you as a surprise. Praise God. If we watch, not even, praise God, not even Satan's going to catch us as a surprise. Verse 10 says, the earth shall quake before them. You see, if Jesus has an earthquake, you see, when Jesus arrives, Zechariah chapter 14, there's going to be a mighty earthquake. But if Jesus has an earthquake, well, Satan's going to have an earthquake also. This is right here. The earth shall quake before them. Remember the sixth seal, Revelation 6, 12, that when Satan arrives, there's also going to be an earthquake. The heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall shall withdraw their shining. Praise God. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. And his, the Lord calls it his army. For his camp is very great, for he is strong that executed his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? The next verses, you know, God brings to attention what we need to do. Yes, God causes His army. Why? Because He uses whomsoever He will to do His will. And remember Revelation chapter what, 17, that the locust army or the ten king, they come to do God's will, to perform His will. Whoa, that's kind of heavy. That's why you should turn to Revelation 17 and read it for yourself. Verse 12 says, Therefore also now, says the Lord, turn you even to me with all your hearts, and with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and with all your heart. And render your heart, rend your heart, and not your garment. You don't want your garments. Even our righteousness, the Bible says there in Isaiah that, that praise God, even our righteousness are as filthy rags before him. You don't want your garment. You don't care how. Well, I don't. I can't go to church, man. The way I'm dressed, praise God. You know, and there's a lot of religions that you have to be dressed with tie and all this and all that and all that. Traditions of men. God doesn't want your garment. God's gonna give you your garment. Praise God. The new man. Praise God. He wants your heart. And turn unto the Lord your God, for He is gracious and merciful, slow to anger. He loves you. And a great kindness. And repenteth Him. Of the evil. And we're going to finish with, uh, we're going to go to Jeremiah 48. Uh, praise God. Please turn with me to Jeremiah 48. We're probably going to set to do two sessions here. Praise God. Jeremiah 48. Let's see y'all. It says Jeremiah chapter 48, verse 
Well, let's look at verse 8. It says, And the spoiler shall come upon every city. Who's the spoiler? Again, Satan the destroyer shall come upon who? Oh, no, this is Nebuchadnezzar. Well, praise God, did Nebuchadnezzar go through every city? No, praise God. And the spoiler shall come upon every city. The destroyer, Satan. And no city shall escape. The valley also shall perish and the plain shall be destroyed as the Lord has spoken. Praise God. Let's, let's go to praise God. You know what? I'm going to stop it there. We'll pick it up in the next lecture. Praise God. And uh, thank you again for joining me. And uh, don't miss. Don't miss the next lecture. You know, praise God. I'm going to do it right after this. You know, I'm going to stop the video right now. Praise God is that, uh, you know, my computer, it, if I pass certain minutes, it will start running slow. So i got to stop it right now. So please forgive me. It's the, uh, thank you for listening. Uh, 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 thank you for for subscribing. And, and thank you for for your prayers. And uh, again, I'm I'm very uh, grateful to you for, for all the views and and please uh, subscribe to our channel and it's it's about uh, you know revealing the plans of Satan. You know the big plan of him is to come imitating the the coming of Christ. You know he's not going to deceive people by saying I'm going to cut your head off. You don't believe in me? Praise God. No, who's going to believe in him? In him like that? Praise God. If they no, praise God. He's going to be saying that. That he's Jesus. He's gonna. How is he gonna? How many antichrists have appeared that deceive the whole world? No, they deceive a whole few. Why? Because they don't actually come from heaven. But if Satan, Satan's gonna come from heaven because that's the only way to deceive the whole world is by making them think that he's Jesus coming from heaven or whatever God you worship. And thank you and God bless.